Hi everyone, so we're on lesson two now of the um, differentiation to the further trigger equation. So it's talking about derivatives of sine, so we know that sine goes to cos, cos goes to minus sine, minus sine goes to minus cos when we differentiate. So sine goes to cos, cos goes to minus sine. There. So it says now we're going to differentiate tan x. Now this is really nice to do. We're going to put it as sine x over cos x. And I'm going to use the quotient rule. So it says here problems usually require the use of chain products and quotient. Right, so on our set, let's get it. Uh, oops, wrong one. I don't want to press this button, but oh, there you go, that works out. Somewhere, hopefully, here, I have the formula booklet. So let's have a look at the formula booklet for the chain rule. It's got binomial series we've not done, small angle approximations. <gasps> Can that trigger identity? The compound angle formulas, we can end there. Uh, can I keep going? And there we go. So there is the quotient rule. So f of x over g of x, so f dashed of x, g of x, minus f of x, g dashed of x. Let's just write that in here. So it's f dashed of x, g of x, minus f of x, g dashed of x all over g of x, all squared. Right, so ideally, you will pause the video and have a go and see if you can get to an answer of secant x, one over cosine, one over cos x. So see if you can use the product rule, uh, sorry, the quotient rule, and get to the right answer. So please pause it, have a go. I'll just do it now and then, but I'll do it quietly. I meant to say you're aiming towards secant squared, 1 over cos squared. There. So if we differentiate tan, we get secant squared there. And that's really, really important though. Let me uh, put a box around it. So if we differentiate tan, it becomes secant squared. And that's a really important one to remember. 
amongst all the million other things you've got to remind of. So it says this results uh, in your formula book. So it's in, right, okay, so it's in the formula book. But let's have a look and see if it is in the formula book. Oops, that's a plus me. Couple up there. Not that much. There you go. So in the differentiation section, top line, differentiate time, it becomes secant squared. Cool. Right, let's keep going then. How much time have we got left? Oh, we're only on five minutes, aren't we? Right, so it says example two, so the differentiator. So if I differentiate 3x squared minus pi by 4, because I'm going to use chain rule, that just becomes a 6x, because a pi by 4 is just a number. People forget that. And then tan becomes secant squared of my original function. There. There we go. So we've got a bit of chain rule with it. So now we're on six minutes. Let's see what's next. There. So these are remember the formula booklet. So we can use these as we know it. So I've got okay, two examples ish, well, maybe a few more. So it asks us to differentiate the e. So remember with e, it stays the same, but using the chain rule, I just differentiate this bit here. So I differentiate secant x and put that at the front. So looking at the formula booklet, if I differentiate secant x, it becomes secant x tan x. And you can actually derive these from using the, the um, quotient rule. Uh, not quotient rule. And then I write down original function. Remember, that's how you differentiate e. So it'll be e to secant x. So that's using e. This next one, if I see it as secant x all cubed, I can do the chain rule on it. So if you remember what the chain rule is for this, it's differentiate the bit in the bracket. So diff the bracket, which is the same as above. So that gives me the secant x tan x. And then I need to deal with the bracket cubed. So I just differentiate. So really what I want to do, uh, let me try and squeeze in the word inside here. So differentiate inside bracket, and then differentiate the bracket cubed. So that would be times by 3 lots of secant x all squared. So if you look at it, if I tidy it up a little bit, the 3 can go on the front. I've got a secant squared and I've got a secant. So I've got a secant cubed and then I've just got a tan. There. Right. I wonder if I've got time for this one. So this one's using uh, the quotient rule. But all I'm doing is using my rules. Part A was using the chain rule for E. Part B was using the chain rule for some function to the power. And C, I've got to use the quotient rule. So I'm just going to pause it there and I'll start it again.